All right, for more on this, let's bring in Ryan Wilson from the Pick 6 podcast. Ryan, <clears throat> all that draft studying you've done, let's go back to draft night. Kenny Pickett gets taken in the first round by the Steelers. Did you think he would have a chance to start week one? No, I, I didn't, Chris. And you mentioned earlier he went 20th overall, the only quarterback to go in the first round, the only quarterback to go in the first two rounds. Uh, he was not my favorite quarterback coming out. He was, I think, fourth on my list. Uh, our buddy Pete Prisco liked him a little more and thought he might end up in a place like Pittsburgh. And and the, my initial reaction was, okay, I don't know when he's going to play. They had already signed Mr. Bisky earlier in the offseason. The first week of training camp was a little rough for Kenny Pickett as well. And then he picked it up. And not only did he pick it up, he picked it up in a big way. Every single one of those preseason games they played, all three of them, he stood out. Now, he didn't stand out more than Mr. Bisky or even Mason Rudolph. All three quarterbacks had great training camps and and preseasons. No interceptions thrown in any of those games. They all threw touchdown passes, all made plays outside of the pocket other than Mason Rudolph, who's more of a pocket passer, all made on-point throws, on-time throws, accuracy, all the things that you want to see from all the quarterbacks on the roster. The Steelers were able to do that. But now the question becomes, do you want to throw Kenny Pickett out there? Yes, he's 24 years old, but he is still a rookie. Uh, He's said it much as much recently. He has a ton to learn. Mike Tomlin hasn't said which way he's going to go. Mike Tomlin routinely meets with the media on Tuesdays, which is tomorrow, before uh, regular season games. Their first game, as you mentioned, is going to be Sunday against the Bengals. And I don't think you want to throw Kenny Pickett out there against the defending AFC champions, a team that was really close to winning the Super Bowl. Because here's the math. And, and Hassel, you're a, you're a Bears fan. You remember Mr. Bisky when he arrived, and, and he did have some positive moments in Chicago. If you put a veteran out there and he struggles – that's fine. You can weather that storm for a game or two, three or four even. If you put a rookie out there, uh, he gets his doors blown off in weeks one and two, then you wonder where he is mentally and whether you want to start doing the old switcheroo and, and pull him and then bring him back in week six or seven or whenever you feel comfortable again, or do you want to let him weather that storm and then take all the, the above-the-neck concerns you might have about getting hit 10, 15 times a game? And I think that's the math that Mike Tomlin's doing. Didn't even know Big Ben had a podcast, but I think he's actually right. I think you roll with Mr. Bisky, you let him uh, take some of those blows that might be coming Kenny Pickett's way. He's a veteran. He's better equipped to probably handle them early on. And then maybe six, seven, eight weeks to the season, depending on how things are going. If you're not happy with Mitch but happy with Kenny, maybe that's when you make that move. All right, well, let's go to another team that is uh, is trying to decide whether or not their young quarterback is going to be able to start week one or they'll have to go with a veteran. That would be the Jets. Zach Wilson injured but went through a workout this morning. Uh, it sounds like a starter is going to be named sometime midweek, perhaps Wednesday Any chance you think that he's going to be available, he being Zach Wilson, or is it going to be Flacco against the Ravens? So if you're the Jets, and I understand why you might say we'll make this determination later in the week, you don't want to tip your hand uh, to the opposition about how this game may go. They're going to face the Ravens, as you mentioned there. The only way you put Zach Wilson out there is if he's 95% or more in terms of being recovered from from that knee, that bone bruise that he suffered during the week one preseason game. Uh, because unlike Kenny Pickett, this is year two for Zach Wilson. He struggled for most of his time on the field last year for New York, and it was hard to watch. Not entirely his fault, not a lot around him. Uh, that has changed. They've added players along the offensive line. They signed Dwayne Brown up from Mekhi Becton got hurt. They have playmakers uh, with Garrett Wilson, their first round pick, Brees Hall, their second round pick. Uh, they have playmakers on the other side of the ball to help defensively. But this is Zach Wilson's Maybe not his prove-it year, but he has to show a lot of progress in order for there not to be conversations about, okay, are the Jets looking for a quarterback? Now, if he's not 95% or more healthy, I think you go with Joe Flacco, who is the exact veteran quarterback you want on your roster when your starter goes down, your young starter goes down. So I think there's no rush to get Zach Wilson out there. Their schedule is pretty tough. Their first four games are all against the AFC North. So if he's not ready for week one health-wise, wait till week two, reevaluate and go from there. Because I think this team is actually going to be better than perhaps people are used to seeing from a New York Jets football team. And if your quarterback's not there, he's not there. Let Joe Flacco handle that and, and then bring Zach Wilson back in week two or week three when he's ready to go. All right, Ryan, let's get to your surprise teams this season. We asked you to come up with a few in each league, five in all. you got about one minute per team here. The Jets are not one of those surprise teams. Let's start with the Miami Dolphins <laughs> with an over-under win total of eight and a half. <laughs> Uh, I'm laughing, Chris, because before we came on, Amanda mentioned that I see the Iowa game. I did not. I saw you tweeting about it. I'm trying to keep things positive. So a (laughs) win's a win, and we'll move on. The Miami Dolphins. The good news about Miami is Tua looks a lot better than he did. I can hear you laughing, Amanda, than he did last season. And and that's so incredibly important because – 
Tyreek Hill, to his credit, has talked him up to, uh, to the entire offseason, and he's shown glimpses of what that looks like on the field. And I think with Mike McDaniel coming in, leaning on the run game to help Tua out, and Tua being showing his stronger arm, which typically you don't see after year two or year three in the NFL, this is an opportunity for this team to make some noise. They faced the Patriots in week one in South Florida. They routinely beat the Patriots there, and I think that could be a great start to a season, a great start for Tua, a great start for Mike McDaniel in his first game as head coach. All right, so you think the Dolphins are going to be one of the surprise teams this season. You also like a team that – that many expect to be a challenger in not only the AFC West, but in the AFC as a whole. The Chargers have a win total at 10. You think they can be even better than that? I think they can go over that number in the toughest division of football. It all comes down to Justin Herbert for starters, uh, who, by the way, went one pick after two in that draft. If there was a redraft, I would guess the Dolphins might re reconsider fairly or not. And I think Justin Herbert is so incredibly good. I've talked to people on that staff that think he's better than Patrick Mahomes. And we'll see. It may be hard to argue after this year. Again, the playmakers around him, they drafted to bolster the offensive line with first-round picks. Zion Johnson most recently in his most recent draft will start at interior guard. We know the playmakers they have on the outside, and I think that defense is going to be really, really good, again, in a division where points are going to be at a premium. So I think not only do they, they have a chance to go make a deep playoff run, I think they're going to win a division, and it's going to be a fun story for a Chargers franchise that historically has fallen on its face when, when it's come uh, when, when push has come to shove at the end of the season. You're a lot higher on them than our sports line models, which uh, is giving them just a 51% chance to make the playoffs. You mentioned hosting the Raiders on CBS to kick things off. All right, Jaguars. A lot of people expected them to be better last season. The Urban Meyer experiment did not work out. Their win total six and a half. Right. So Urban Meyer was probably the worst case scenario for the development of Trevor Lawrence. And Doug Peterson probably feels like the best case scenario. He obviously had all the success early on in Philadelphia, won that Super Bowl with Carson Wentz and Nick Foles. And I think he is the, the right temperament, the right coaching style, everything that Trevor Lawrence needs to take that next step. Uh, look, the Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars looked pretty good in times of the preseason. They were on time in terms of the passing. The accuracy was there. They're going to be able to lean on Travis Etienne now, who didn't play last year because of a foot injury. So they basically have an extra first round pick. I think the defense is going to be surprisingly good. Trayvon Walker was the first overall pick. He's made some impacts. They have Josh Allen, the edge rusher who, who gets after it. And I think in a division that's not very strong, if they can come out and perhaps get up to a fast start, Commanders feels like a winnable game. They beat the Colts in Week 18 last year to keep them out of the playoffs. There's a chance they can win seven, eight, sniff nine games. And, and while that may not necessarily get them in the playoffs, it's a great start for an organization that was going uh, the absolute wrong direction last year by the, by the time things ended. All right, so three teams in the AFC you think are going to surprise Jaguars, Chargers, and Dolphins. You also have a couple of teams in the NFC, the Detroit Lions, your first up. Why do you think they can surprise this season? I say it all the time, half serious, half joking. I don't know if Dan Campbell knows X's and O's at all, but he is such a motivator that, you you know, you watch things like Hard Knocks, and you're almost tempted, as, as me as a middle-aged man, to run through a wall for this guy. Like he, he can sell you anything, and I think his players have bought into that. They didn't win a lot of football games last year. You see it last year, 313-1. But they were playing hard, and that is so incredibly important when you're on a team where players are used to winning, coming from college programs that have been successful or other teams in the NFL, and coming to a situation like Detroit, which has historically been not great, and finding ways to win football games. And I think they're going to be much better. Uh, uh, Aiden Hutchinson was their first-round pick. He got after it during uh, training camp and preseason. Jared Goff is a lot better, and I think he deserves more credit than we've given him for what he's been able to accomplish in Detroit. Amon Ross St. Brown has been special uh, coming into year two, and they're going to get Jameson Williams back at some point this season, and we know what kind of playmaker he was last year for Alabama. Division's not great. They have Aaron Rodgers. What else is going to come after Green Bay? We'll have to find out. But I, I like the Lions to make a little noise this season. Okay, and one more team that Ryan Wilson thinks is going to surprise this season, the Baker Mayfield-led Panthers, who host the Browns in Week 1 on Sunday. Yeah, this is for a producer, James, who's a, who's a Panthers fan. Uh, he's not convinced <laughs> if the Panthers can be able to do it. But, I, look, I think Baker Mayfield, it's a cliche, needed the, 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 ch the change of scenery. And he got it. Now, is it the best case scenario in terms of players around him? No, but if Christian McCaffrey is healthy, that's a huge if. This offense has a chance to do some things. We saw it in the past when Cam Newton was there and doing the things that he was doing. The offensive line was improved. The Panthers did the right thing by taking Icky Kwanu with that early pick as opposed to a quarterback that high. They got Matt Corral in the third round. He's going to be gone for the year with a foot injury. But I think Baker, with the players around him, they have uh, – 
Robbie Anderson. They traded for LaVisca Chenault. And that defense, which is full of first and second round pick, all young players, is going to be better. And again, the division is not very good. And if Baker can stand up his own way, focus on the on the field stuff, not worry about the noise outside, I think they're going to be a much improved team, much better than when Sam Darnold was under center. Ryan Wilson with us on HQ. Five surprise teams for the season, including the Carolina Panthers with a win total of six and a half. You can hear Ryan on the Pick 6 podcast, though he's not on the latest episode. It's just Brinson and Breach breaking down AFC win totals and giving their best bets. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.